we don't start the video yeah and you can now see the ppt hello everyone good evening and welcome for today's evening class so we have talked about the various aspects of solution chapter right how the solution is formed energetic conditions and we talked about the solubility and the factors that affect solubility then henry's law rolt's law then those solutions which obey rolt's law are called ideal solutions and there are non ideal solutions also right ideal and non ideal solutions and what are the characteristics of these okay these are the part of discussion in the previous class now one more part of this is important one is colligative properties what is this colligative property is colligative property is the properties of solution which depends upon only the number of particles present in the solution but not depend upon the nature of it so what we mean here is if a property of a solution is determined only by the number of particles not by what is being dissolved in the solution then that is the colligative property suppose you have urea solution of urea and solution of glucose in both the solutions whether you have added urea or glucose doesn't matter the nature doesn't make any difference but the properties which depends upon how much you have added that is colligative property okay so we look into that right okay okay this one we have seen that okay okay right okay now we will take up the all the colligative properties which are we supposed to know about there are four such colligative properties which are known that are elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point osmotic pressure and relative lowering of vapor pressure these are well known colligative properties these properties of solution depend upon only how much quantity of solute is being dissolved right no doesn't depend upon the nature of solute right so colligative property is basically the properties that depends upon number of solute particles depends upon number of solute particles right now according to rolt's law according to rolt's law we know that the vapor pressure of the solvent in the solution is less than that of the pure solvent okay or let me take up the mathematical expression of the rolt's law p of a or solution p of c solution is equal to p0 of a s solvent and mole fraction of solvent if a is the solvent say water okay there is a solution there is a solution which is made by water as solvent that is an aqueous solution it is an aqueous solution and vapor pressure vapor vapor pressure vapor is due to only water and there is a non volatile solute say this is the equation that we are if we are using for the rolt's law use using as rolt's law now suppose if i divide this by p not say this is x equal to x a mole fraction of a so let us derive some mathematical expression 
suppose if both equals are subtracted from 1 then the remain the remaining things are also equal or we can go for simplifying this p not minus p not because 1 taking the lcm p not minus p of solution vapor pressure of the solution divided by p not is equal to 1 minus xa 1 minus mole fraction of solvent a is a solvent then this is mole fraction of solute 1 minus xa in unit mole fraction of solute so p not minus ps by p not this is called relative lowering of vapor pressure relative lowering of pressure vapor pressure is p p not minus ps divided by p not the difference between the vapor pressure of the pure component and vapor pressure of the solution. Suppose if a non-volatile solute is added, vapor pressure decreases. How much is decreased? That can be that is lowering of vapor pressure. So this divided by vapor pressure of the pure solvent will give relative lowering of vapor pressure. That depends only upon mole fraction of solute. So this is Xb, right? Because it is 1 minus x, it is, doesn't depend upon the solvent now. Now it is solute. Therefore, relative lowering of vapor pressure depend upon the solute particles. Therefore, it is a colligative property. Right. Now, elevation in boiling point. What is this elevation in boiling point? Suppose if you add salt to water, the boiling point of the water, which was solvent, it increases. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Right? 100 degrees Celsius, water boils. When solute, which is non volatile, is added, its boiling point increases. Suppose it may increase by 5 degrees, that is 105 degrees. This difference between the elevated temperature and actual boiling point of the solvent. It is called elevation in boiling point and denoted as delta Tb. This delta Tb, the temperature that is being raised up, that is a colligative property, depends upon how much solute you have added. More the solute you have added, more will be the temperature elevated. If you want 110 degrees Celsius solution to boil at 110 degrees Celsius, so what you have added at this case, you have to increase the grams, increase the mass of solute to be added. That is the thing. Right. So elevation in boiling point. Okay. So we try to note from the graph point of view. This vapor pressure and temperature graph, vapor pressure and temperature graph is as follows. Vapor pressure increases with increase in temperature. Therefore, it increases like this. Vapor pressure increases with increase in temperature. Say this is for a pure solvent. Pure solvent if it is so. What about the solution? Vapor pressure of the solution is just below the vapor pressure of sol solvent. So this is for solvent. If this is the curve, the same trend, same trend, but with, with little lower. With, with lower lead vapor pressure, with lower vapor pressure, it starts. So, this will be for solution. This will be for solution. Vapor pressure and temperature graph is like this. Now, when vapor pressure reaches one atmospheric pressure, when it reaches one atmospheric pressure, so any liquid that reaches atmospheric pressure, we consider it as standard as one atmospheric pressure, this is, this boils. This boil. This is the boiling point of pure water, 100 degrees Celsius. If it is a solution, so it, it touches the, this curve that, that touches one atmosphere at little higher temperature, maybe 105 degrees Celsius. This difference is called delta Tb. This difference is called delta Tb. And this delta Tb, if you want to increase that, more of solute should be added to the solution. 
और मैथमेटिकली डेल्टा टी बी एलिवेशन इन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू मोलालिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन मोलालिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन एम और वी कैन राइट डेल्टा टी बी इज इक्वल टू ए प्रपोर्शनलिटी कॉन्स्टेंट के बी इन टू मोलालिटी दिस इज हाउ वी हैव डिराइव एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड बुलियोस्कोपिक कॉन्स्टेंट और मोलाल एलिवेशन कॉन्स्टेंट राइट सो मोलाल एलिवेशन कॉन्स्टेंट इज दैट एंड दिस इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर अ सॉल्वेंट फॉर अ सॉल्वेंट राइट एट अ पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर के बी इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके दिस के बी वैल्यू इज पॉइंट फाइव टू पॉइंट फाइव टू फॉर वॉटर यू मे रिमेम्बर इट एस इट इज delta tb is kelvin it is in kelvin and molality is measured in moles per kg right therefore what is the unit of kg when it is the unit of mol, uh, what is the unit of kb it should be delta tb by m that is k divided by uh, temperature measured in kelvin kelvin this is this is moles per kg the mole per kg this is the unit for molality therefore unit for kb is unit for kb is kelvin per mole per kg per mole kelvin kg per mole kelvin per kg will become kg kg per mole kelvin kg per mole okay this is the way we have the The expression delta T B is equal to K B into molality. This will on based on which the questions will be asked, right? Now, so look at the uh, graph, the same graph that I have drawn, and this is delta T B and the T B. This is the temperature difference. This is delta T B. Okay, so this is del. This is nothing but delta T B. The difference is delta T B, right? now in the same way depression in freezing point also we can have so vapor pressure versus temperature vapor pressure versus temperature the graph in the liquid state is like this suppose the vapor pressure in the solid state comes the way that phase change vapor pressure curve is different now this solution this is for solution and this is for solvent pure solvent and this takes the change only when it touches the air therefore when the pure so when the pure solvent freezes at this point the solution freezes at this point little less temperature than at what temperature the solution the solvent freezes this difference is called this difference is called delta tf depression in freezing point depression in freezing point again the same logic delta tf is a colligative property which depends upon the number of particles therefore it is directly proportional to molality delta tf is equal to kf into molality kf is cryoscopic constant or molal depression constant kf for water is 1.82 okay 1.82 kelvin kg per mole and uh, this will be given in following the pro questions right now how to define delta kb and kf i will tell you some simple method delta tb is equal to kb into molality a similar type of expressions we have delta tf is equal to kf into molality so we will get some questions like define bullioscopic constant or molar elevation constant define cryoscopic constant kf in that way in that case what we have to do is for always have a mathematical expression correct mathematical expression if m is equal to 1 if m is equal to 1 then kb is equal to 
delta T B. Okay. Therefore, how to define this? Molar elevation constant is elevation in boiling point of one molar solution. M is equal to one. One molar solution. This is the way we define. So, for most of the for the most of the definitions, when you take up a proper equation, you can do it or you can do it very easily. And for the for the Kf, it can be defined as Kf is equal to delta Tf if m is equal to 1. Therefore, cryoscopic constant is depression in freezing point of one molar solution. Okay. So, this is the way we can define. Okay. Now, where we use this uh, depression in freezing point, where we observe this, in cold countries, countries where in temperature goes below 0 degree Celsius, the water used in the cars as coolant becomes ice. It becomes, it solidifies, freezes. And therefore, it won't do its work. Therefore, what we what they do is they mix ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol, so that the whole solution freezes free, freezes below minus four degree or my, below minus five degree accordingly according to the requirement. So it can be it can be it cannot become solid. Therefore, this is being done, right? Okay, water in the car radiator, and where the snowfall is there and which troubles because uh, the roads will be full of snow and clearing of the snow, salting is being done. This is also based on depression of freezing point, right? So, salt is added to melt ice by reducing freezing point, okay? Now, another colligative property is osmos osmotic pressure. Let us know about osmotic pressure in the real uh, real sense say there is a container container which is having two solutions okay one is water pure water and here is a solution both are separated by a semi permeable membrane say so the movement of solute particle solvent particles that is pure water side to the solution. This leads to osmosis. So, this is semi permeable membrane, copper ferrocyanide or so. H2O moves from, moves pure water, pure uh, solvent moves to the solution side. This is the point you have to remember, right? So, this is called osmosis. So, semi permeable membrane, let us see. Okay, so if the semi permeable membrane is placed between the solvent and the solution, the solvent molecules will move or flow through the membrane from the pure solvent to the solution. This process of flow of the solvent is called osmosis. This is called osmosis, right? So, osmotic pressure is a osmotic pressure is a colligative property. Let you look at this video. For better understanding. Pass through the holes of these membranes. The thicker molecules, like the solute, are unable to pass through them. This is a solution and this is a pure water side. Water is moving. Which are selectively permeable to only certain molecules. Under the semi-permeable membranes or SEM. These membranes can be of natural origin or synthetic origin. Okay. So, semi-permeable membrane may be synthetic or naturally also these are available, we see. And by the movement of water to the solution side, a pressure developed to this side, a pressure develops, right? So, if you apply pressure at the this solution front, solution side, to stop osmosis is called osmotic pressure, right? The, the equal pressure that you apply at the other side, okay, solution side, so that the movement of the water is stopped. 
that is called osmotic pressure and denoted as pi. It is denoted as pi. And osmotic pressure is a colligative property. It depends upon how much concentrated it, this one is. Right? So, if the more concentration, more will be the flow. Pressure will be will be more. Right? It can pass through the holes of these membranes. Okay. So, if you apply more of the pressure than the osmotic pressure, then what is going to happen? This is reverse osmosis. A reverse osmosis occur, and this is what we use for desalination of water, right? Salt water to pure water. It is a reverse osmosis plant. This is a solution side. This is the pure solvent side. Solution. So you can find the salt molecules here. So the water moves from here so that its pressure develops here, right? So, if you apply the pressure at this side, so this is due to osmosis. Now, if you apply the pressure, then reverse osmosis, solvent will move. So, this is called reverse osmosis, right? Okay. Now, look at the some data which is being given here. Okay. Solution water, when Solute is not added to the water, okay, zero. Its melting point is zero degrees Celsius. Boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. And its osmotic pressure also is considered zero. Glucose solution. Glucose is added to water. 18 grams of glucose is added. Okay. Or 0 0.1 molar solution. 0 0.1 molar solution is being taken. Or 0 0.1 mole is being added. Then melting point is decreased by 0 0.19 decreased and boiling point increases by 100 to 100 0.05 these were all the observations which are being done and osmotic pressure will be 2.4 atmospheric pressure right if 18 to 36 if you increase this that means 0.2 mole this increases to 0.36 Melting point decreases, decreases by 2.36. And boiling point increases 100.10. Right? So, this data tells you that there is elevation in boiling point and depression in freezing point. These are all being observed. And then, then the calculation or using mathematical expressions, we can able to give the value for Kb and uh, Kb value and the Kf values. Right. So, data, all data are, are, may not be important at this particular time. Now, these are all okay with. So, we have got four expressions. One is P naught minus P divided by P naught relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to X2. We write mole fraction X2, you, we mean mole fraction of solute right this is mole fraction of solute now for the elevation in boiling point delta tb is equal to kb into molality this is another expression we have delta tf is equal to kf into molality another mathematical expression and osmotic pressure pi is equal to CRT concentration R gas constant and temperature T. So these are the mathematical expressions that we have, right? And this is further written in this way to solve the problems based on 
which the based on uh, this particular uh, question, this particular expression, the various way the questions can be asked to help you. This expression also will be written. Thousand KB W two by M two W one. What is W two? It is the weight of the solute and given mass of the solute. M2 is molar mass of solute. W1 is weight of the solvent, weight of the solvent in grams. Once it is grams, the thousand is there. Okay. So the molality is number of moles, given mass by molar mass is number of moles divided by mass of solvent in kg. Therefore, this expression can be written. Right. So, whenever the weight of the solute to be found out, then this expression will be of help. Right. These are all okay when solute do not undergo association or dissociation. This is another important thing. A solute, for example, sodium chloride, we consider this as one particle, sodium chloride as one particle. But when you, when you put in water that has separated into sodium ion and chloride ion, and has become two particles. Each ion is also a particle. Then colligative property changes. So, when such kind of compounds, such kind of compounds, if you, if you find the molar mass of it, if you find the molar mass of that, by using colligative expressions, we get abnormal molecular mass. We won't get the real molecular mass. So, for that, there is a remedy. We have to we have introduced the want of factor i. Want of factor i is to be written in the right side, right hand side of all these expressions. Right hand side of all these expressions. The i value can be equal to 1 if solute do not undergo, solute do not undergo association or dissociation, and i is greater than 1. I is greater than 1 for solutes which undergo dissociation. If one particle becomes two particles in the solution, then the colligative property also increases. Therefore, I value should increase. I value is greater than 1. For dissociation, I is less than 1. Okay. So, these are the want of the factors which are being added to the right hand side. Why it is being added? It is because if the solute undergo dissociation, if a solute undergo dissociation, number of particle increases, delta Tb or this increases, colligative property observed will increase. To match that, we have to, in, we have to add a con, uh, want of factor. What is want of factor? We will quickly see. Okay. Okay. When the solute undergoes dissociation or association, the molar mass obtained from the colligative properties does not coincide with the normal molar mass, right? So, for want of factor is needed. So, what is want of factor? It can be defined in various ways. One is want of factor I is observed colligative property by theoretical or normal colligative property. From the point of view of colligative property, so observed colligative property by the experiments and normal or theoretical by based on the if you know the molar mass of the solute then you can calculate theoretically that is theoretical otherwise i is normal molar mass divided by observed molar mass right this is the way we can define want of factor okay so i will tell you the simplest way of uh, remembering and applying these things in the examinations right so there are expressions which are being given for dissociation if uh, if alpha is the degree of dissociation, if alpha is the degree of dissociation and n is the number of particles obtained after dissociation, m is the number of particles obtained after dissociation, then it can be written like this. Alpha is equal to i minus 1 divided by n minus 1. For association, i minus 1 divided by 1 by m minus 1 okay it may be difficult to remember i will i will tell you the way of uh, applying in a very uh, easy way okay if you can able to remember these are given in the books this is well and good
हेलो ब्रो चाणक्य चाणक्य बैडमिंटन चाणक्य पैड्रा सर हेलो प्रणय प्रणय
Okay, was it stopped? Okay, is it audible now? The Zoom messages can seem. Yeah, okay, fine, fine, thank you. Sorry for uh, the interruptions. So, whatever we say, there will be some. Some problem it will be there. But okay, fine. Anyway, uh, right. This is what I was talking about. The formula to be recalled in this way, and then okay, we have to go ahead with it. So there are many conversions to be done. This is an in-text question. Remember, it is an in-text question. Therefore, so number of moles of the polymer is one gram given mass by molar mass. One divided by one lakh eighty-five thousand. One more zero should be there, and uh, then Pascal, it should be R is to be taken in Pascal. That is to be remembered. R is 8.314 into 10 to the power 3. Pascal liter per Kelvin per mole. This is the R value, right? Therefore, this is 30.98 Pascal will come. So whatever the answer is, but at the moment, you must have to able to recall the formula and can able to do the conversions, right? Now we will come to the objective type questions, okay? So we will go through one by one. Right. 500 gram of toothpaste sample has 0 0.2 gram of fluoride concentration. What is the concentration of fluoride in terms of PPM? PPM we mean parts per million. Parts per million. So it is, it is mass of mass of solute. Right by mass of solution mass of solution if it is in terms of mass into 10 to the power 6 
per million per million how much parts of solute is there it may be mass or volume right so mass of solute by mass of solution so 0.2 gram of fluoride 0.2 gram of fluoride is present in 500 gram of toothpaste therefore for 10 to the power 6 how much is this if you do this calculation you will get the answer right parts per million is one of the method of expressing concentration so this is one question which is being asked right so this answer will be coming to be 400 you can see it's an easy calculation now which of the following will have the highest boiling point at one atmosphere okay okay uh, sir once you tell want of factor okay i will tell about want of factor uh, once again right okay right want of factor i will just uh, uh, do that yeah one minute okay Before that, I will add a new slide. Okay. Okay. So, uh, want of factor, want of factor. So, don't go with the definitions as abnormal molar mass and all those things want of factor can be understood uh, very easily when you can able to for a given solute you can able to write whether it is undergoing dissociation or association properly if suppose there is a salt like k2so4 right k2so4 salt is there then this undergo dissociation as 2k plus and so4 2 minus i hope there is no problem in understanding this therefore potassium exists always as k plus and sulfate as 2 minus ion therefore to balance 2 minus ion there should be 2k plus ion so if one particle is undergoing dissociation complete look you 2 plus 1 3 particles i value is equal to 3 this is for dissociation complete dissociation any any such kind of salt you take and you can predict the want of factor. For, for example, if it is BaCl2, can you tell me what is the value of want of factor? What is the value of want of factor? Okay. Okay, three, sir. Okay, right. Three. Okay, many have given the answer as three, right? Now, coming to this. Okay, the I value is three because of BA2 plus and 2Cl minus. This is right. This is about complete dissociation if it is completely associated suppose if it is completely associated what happened to this mm -hmm. sometime it won't work at all okay so it is completely associated say for example if ch3 cooh it associates in the sense it becomes like this CH3 COOH 2. Two separate molecules, two separate molecules. We consider this as two separate molecules, but it is combined to form one molecule. This is association example. So I value becomes half. It is always less than one for association. What we predict, predicted, we thought that it is to be two. 
but in the in this practically it is only half of it right only one part one is there one such molecule is present therefore the i value is half for dimerization it is called dimerization for dimerization i is equal to half now i will take up another case why it is not going Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is another thing. Add one more. Yes. Yes. Now, another case of dissociation I will take. Suppose there is acetic acid. Acetic acid, you know that this is a weak acid, right? It is a weak acid. It doesn't undergo complete ionization. CH3, COO minus and H plus. So we know that it dissociates like this, but it won't undergo, it won't undergo completely dissociation, not 100% dissociation, it is a weak electrolyte. For that, what we have to do, we should know the degree of dissociation. If it is case, the degree of dissociation will be given. For example, the question will be asked like this, what is the want of factor for acetic acid, want of factor for acetic acid, if it undergo 20% dissociation? If it undergo 20% dissociation, what will be the want of factor, right? So 20% means 20 by 100, right? So this is 1 by 5. I value is 1 by 5. Sorry, alpha value is 1 by 5. 20% degree of dissociation. Out of 5, one molecule dissociates. This is the fraction. In the fraction, we keep that in this way. Now, suppose if there were one molecule before, starting the process and when it was 0 and 0, this was initially when we started and the one particle, some of this has gone and undergone dissociation. Therefore, the what remains is 1 minus alpha. This is the way we take. If alpha is the degree of dissociation, that fraction of molecules have gone dissociated. If one CH3COH dissociates, there is one CH3CO minus and H plus ion. Therefore, this is also alpha and this is also alpha. Right? Now, what is I? I is number of particles. Number of particles at equilibrium. At equilibrium, this is the, this is the number of particles. That means we have to add this. 1 minus alpha plus alpha plus alpha. 1 minus alpha plus alpha plus alpha. These are all... These are all the uh, is equal to I value. Some of this is equal to I value. Now, alpha, alpha get cancels, minus alpha. There is 1 plus alpha. I is 1 plus alpha. If it is 40% dissociated, 1 plus 40%, 1 by 5. I value is 1 by 1, point, 1 by 5 or I value is 1.2. 1 1.2. 1 okay. So this is the way I value is calculated if alpha is known. So remember that acetic acid, if completely dissociates, I would have, I value would have been 2. If it completely dissociates, if I see acetic acid doesn't dissociate at all, then I value will be 1. Because acetic acid, I value will become 1 if it is not at all dissociating. If it undergo 20% dissociation, it should be before. Between 1 and 2, it should be between 1 and 2 and we have got the answer 1.2, right? This is the way for a weak electrolyte, I value is calculated from alpha value that is degree of dissociation, right? Hope it is clear, right? I will just check any message is there. Okay. For that again. This 
some time touch okay, okay. right okay okay fine so let me go ahead with it the the rest of the thing right okay so still time is there for us no problem right now okay okay which of the following will have the highest boiling point now which of the following will have the highest boiling point okay this is what oftenly asked okay so glucose is not this option c glucose is not dissociated i value for this one is 2 na and cl for this i value uh, is 3 therefore answer is c answer is c good okay now come on 5% solution of cane sugar is isotonic with 1% substance x the molecular formula uh, molecular okay. mass of x is molecular mass of x is 5% solution is isotonic with 1% substance isotonic solutions uh, okay, means sir. those have the same molecule same osmotic pressure come on somebody told me some answer is it d okay what way it is to be done if it is a five percent solution five gram of that is present in 100 gram of uh, the solvent 100 gram of say uh, water right five gram so this five gram five gram of that particular one solution of cane sugar its molecular mass is 342 5 divided by 5, 342, that is number of moles. Number of moles of this must be equal to number of moles of this, if this is isotonic. Isotonic means osmotic pressures are equal. If osmotic pressure is supposed to be equal, then number of particles must be equal. Therefore, uh, 5 by 5, uh, 5 grams divided by molar mass, molar mass of cane sugar, C12, H22, O11. This is the formula of cane sugar. You can calculate it is 342. And this is 1%. And the molar mass of this one is not known. X. Molar mass of this X is not known. Therefore, the X value is 342 divided by 5. Okay. 342 divided by 5. So, okay, it is simple calculation. 5, 5, 6. The, so, this is 68.5. Okay, you can say this is 68.5, right? This is the way we have to do. So, if the two solutions are isotonic, what is to be done? Then number of moles kindly equate it because if two, concern, the two solutions are isotonic, their concentrations must be equal. Concentrations. Concentration of two solutions must be equal. Concentration to be equal means number of moles divided by volume of solution. If the volumes are equal, the number of moles should be equal, right? If volumes of the two solutions are equal, the number of moles should be equal. Therefore, we have to equate the equation like this. This is also often asked the question important. The vapor pressure of the solvent, e, solvent is 0.8 atmosphere, vapor pressure of a solvent. When the non-volatile solute is added to it, its vapor pressure drops to 0.6. The mole fraction of the solute B is solvent a this is capital a hmm? option b sir option b okay i will just try to see your messages also okay i think i cannot this facility of saying both are not there okay option c sir okay so what way this is to be option done is c. p of the solution p of a is equal to p naught a into mole fraction of a this is about solvent so solution is dropped to 0 0.6 when p naught a is 0 0.8 so we can able to find out mole fraction of solvent x a is equal to 0 0.6 by 0 0.8 6 by 8 okay 2 3 is a 2 4 is a 3 by 4 x a is 3 by 4 
Therefore, x b is, it is asked x b, right? x a is 0.75, but what is asked? Mole fraction of b. Therefore, what should be the answer? a. If it is 0.75, the b, mole fraction of b should be 0.25. Okay, so this is how it is to be, right? Relative lowering of vapor pressure is directly equal to XB. But we have used Raoult's law. It is, we will got XA and from then we have to find out XB. KB for water is 0.2 Kelvin uh, per molality. Then 0.1 molal solution boils at. Sir, option B, sir. Yeah, option B, sir. Option B. Very good. Option B is the right answer because delta TB is equal yeah, to KB into molality. This KB is 0 0.52. Molality is 0 0.1. 0 0.52 for water, then 0 0.1 molal solution, 0 0.1. This is 0 0.052. So this is elevated by 0 0.052, 100 degrees Celsius plus this. That means this is the elevated boiling point, right? You have done it correctly. Keep it up. Now, depression in freezing point of 0 0.01 molal aqua solution of urea, sodium chloride, sodium sulfate is in the ratio. Option B. Option B. Okay. Option B, sir. Okay. Which Namodaya is this? Bangalore Urban, sir. Bangalore Urban. Fine. Selvan, sir, is there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I want to say is the message. Okay. Then we best go that way. Okay. You are keeping the options, but here is the problem. Okay. The option is 1, 2, 3 because urea is undissociated. Urea is NH2CO NH2. Right? It is not undergoing dissociation. Sodium chloride I value is 2. Na plus and Cl minus. Sodium value, sodium sulfate is I value is 3. Therefore, I value is 1 is to 2 is to 3. So this, this also, uh, this therefore it is also in this ratio because concentration of all these are 0 0.01 m only. Right. You are right. Now, mole fraction of a solute in one molal aqua solution is mole fraction of solute. Mole fraction of solute in one molal aqua solution option c sir option c yeah mole fraction of solute one molal aqua solution one mole means one molal means one molal solution we mean one mole of solute one mole of solute option c sir yes right one mole of solute Dissolved 1 kg of solvent, 1 divided by 1 plus 1 kg, 1000 grams divided by 18. So this is 1 divided by 1 plus 55.5. That is 1 divided by 56.5. If you do, you will get the right answer. So option C is right. Okay, you have done fast. A solution of sulfuric acid in water is? An ideal solution obeys Raoult's law, shows negative deviation, shows positive deviation. Option a C, solution sir. of sulfuric acid in water. Option C, sir. Option C. How do you say sir, it is an option C? Sir. How do you say that it is option C? So negative deviation. Self, it is easy to remember because sulfuric acid in water any acid in water okay if you dilute an acid it is an exothermic reaction okay so delta h is negative so delta h is negative if it is an exothermic process 
whenever it is negative that shows negative deviation so you can relate it and you can remember okay fine osmotic pressure of 0.1 m sodium chloride at 27 degrees celsius is come on do the calculation if it is easy Option B, sir. Option B. Option D, sir. Yeah. Option so B. We have calculated probably they have used this pi is equal to CRT. Right. So it is in atmosphere, right? In atmosphere. Right. Concentration is 0 0.1. This concentration is 0 0.1. Sodium chloride, so that you have to take I value. Whether you have taken I value, I value for sodium chloride is 2. 2 into 0 0.1 into R value is 0 0.082. 0 0.082. Temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, right? Sorry, 300 Kelvin. Okay. So, I value whether you have taken or not, you just check. Option C, sir. Option C. So, this is 2.46 is coming. Is it right or uh, uh, whether the calculation to be done? I don't know. I, I have not checked it. If you do this calculation, if whatever the answer you are getting, that is the right answer. Okay. Two into point one, point two. Four point nine two. Four point nine two is the right answer, right? So this is not the right answer. What you have said is right. I value might have not been taken at the time. Okay, if alpha is the degree of dissociation of sodium sulfate in water, the want of factor I used for calculating molecular mass is if alpha is the degree of dissociation of sodium sulfate. Option. Come on, say the answer once again. Option D, sir. Option C. Okay. So, sodium sulfate, it is about sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, right? It dissociates as 2Na plus and SO4 2 minus. It dissociates like this, right? So, this is one molecule. If you take, it was 0 and 0 initially. If it is 1 minus alpha at equilibrium, 1 minus alpha, if alpha, alpha is the degree of dissociation, then this is 2 alpha and alpha. Remember this. Because one sodium sulfate gives two sodium ion. Therefore, it should be two alpha. Now, what is I value now? I value is equal to one minus alpha plus two alpha plus alpha. Addition of all this. Now, plus alpha minus alpha cancels. Therefore, it is one plus two alpha will remain. One plus two alpha. So, the answer is C. Okay, fine. The osmotic pressure of 0.1 m urea is pi. What will be the osmotic pressure of 0.1 m solution of 0.1 m solution of NaCl? 2 pi. Option C. 2 pi or 0.2 pi? 2 pi. Option C. Option A. Option C. Option C, sir. Very okay. confidently telling option C. Ah, yes, Who is sir. this? From J. Yes, option, option C, C is the right answer. If this is pi, for NaCl, I value is 2, therefore it should be 2 pi. Right. Want of factor for 0.1m ideal solution is? Want of factor for 0.1m ideal solution? Yes. Option B. Option B. Let others. Option B, sir. Option B only. Okay, whatever may be the solution, 
ओके पॉइंट वन एम और वट एवर फॉर आइडियल सोल्यूशन आई इज इक्वल टू वन बिकॉज इट डजेंट अंडर गो Association or dissociation? Uh, okay. Only when the case uh, association yeah. dissociation comes, alpha i value will come. Therefore, want of factor is depending upon association or dissociation. Remember that. Therefore, i value is one. This is right answer. Sugar is soluble in water due to high solvation energy, ionic character of sugar, hydrogen bond Up formation see, with water. None of this. None of above. option c option c option c is the right answer because hydrogen bond okay so hydrogen bond is the one which is responsible for dissolution of sugar yes okay fine so you are involving well in the class that's good keep it up blood cell retain its shape in the solution Which are option B, hypotonic to blood, isotonic to blood, hypertonic to blood, equinormal to option blood. B. Sir, option B, sir. Option B, sir. Option B. So blood retain its shape. Okay. So what happens if it is kept in hypotonic solution, hypertonic solution? Okay, all these things might have been explained. So it is isotonic. It retains its shape. Okay, fine. Which of the following acts as a semi-permeable membrane? Okay, so I told you that it is synthetic. Synthetic. Therefore, you may not be knowing this. Copper ferrocyanide. Copper ferrocyanide is synthetic semi-permeable membrane. Okay, RO systems are having this, right? Okay. So here are some more questions which are asked in this competitive exercise. I think it is CET level question. So far you had little easier type, and this is CET level questions, right? A binary liquid solution is prepared by mixing N heptane and ethanol. Which one of the following statements is correct regarding the behavior of the solution? Okay, binary liquid solution is prepared by N heptane and ethanol. N heptane and ethanol. A solution formed is an ideal solution. The solution is non-ideal, showing positive deviation. The solution is non-ideal, showing negative deviation. N Option heptane B, shows positive deviation. Yeah, ethanol shows negative deviation from Rhodes law. Option B. Option B. How do you say that positive deviation? Yes, your answer is right. N heptane is non-polar. N heptane is non-polar, right? Hydrocarbon, whereas ethanol is having hydrogen bonding, strong hydrogen bonding, right? So when heptane is added, ethanol get disturbed. Ethanol falls apart. When the when the heptane comes into between, ethanol falls apart. So that solution volume increases. So which kind of solution? Which kind of solution? This delta H mix is positive for positive deviation. If volume increases, then it is a positive deviation. So shows positive deviation from Raoult's law is the right answer. Okay, that is the thing. Fine. Now come on. Ethylene glycol is used as an antifreeze in cold climate. Mass of the ethylene glycol, which should be added to four kg yes, of water, to P. Pardon me. Cannot able to see. Four kg of water to prevent it from freezing at minus six degrees Celsius will be. Okay, it needs little calculation. Try for a minute. Sir, Pyra, sir. Yes. What is the answer? Pyra, sir. Yes.
ऑप्शन बी सर ऑप्शन बी वेस्ट गोदावरी ओके समीर यादव ईश्वर पापी जी दी केमिस्ट्री राइट ऑप्शन बी राइट आई कैन सी योर मैसेजेस ओके आई कैन कीप अप टू दिस सो दैट इट कैन बी इजी ओके कैन यू एबल टू सी क्लियरली इफ इट इज ऑफ दिस साइज ऑप्शन बी ओके ऑप्शन बी इज द राइट आंसर so ethylene glycol is used as an antifreeze in the cold climate mass of the ethylene glycol is being asked so this is delta tf this this one delta tf is equal to delta tf is equal to okay this is uh, i value anyway it is one only because uh, ethylene glycol is not undergoing dissociation or association 1000 w2 kf by m2 w1 so you have to do this calculation 1000 into ethylene glycol must okay mass of the ethylene glycol which should be added that means w2 you have to find out kf is being given kf for water right it is in water only therefore 1.86 okay whole divided by m2 ethylene glycol you have to find out okay this is also given 62 molar mass is being given right in 4 kg of water 4 kg means 4000 you have to write here in this formula okay so that this 0 0 cancels anyway so this delta tf is minus 6 degree celsius you have to take it as 6 only now w2 is 6 into 62 into 4 divided by 1.86 if this you do this calculation you will get the answer hope you have done it and uh, right this is 804 b is the answer right answer right b is the right answer now okay sometime you may observe that also now degree of dissociation of alpha of a weak electrolyte axby is related to want of factor i by the expression okay so degree of dissociation of alpha so if you have understood the derivation that i have done you can able to write this axby how it splits write that and then so this is little bit tricky question it is from competitive examinations sir right? arvin c sir option b hats off good you are very speed and uh, accurate speed and accuracy matters is right so what you have to do is here if ax and by ax by dissociates it gives x number of a y plus kind of ion plus y number of b x minus ion whatever may be the nature of ion one mole of this gives 0 0 and one minus alpha gives x of alpha and y of alpha 1 minus alpha gives x of alpha and y minus alpha now i is equal to 1 minus alpha plus x alpha plus y alpha now 1 minus alpha you keep uh take common so that this is x plus y minus 1 x plus y minus 1 right now alpha is equal to now alpha is equal to okay so if needed you have to change the sign of it if this is plus this is minus this is sorry i have taken okay the answer has come you we'll go ahead mm -hmm. right now uh, this is minus alpha plus only we have taken 
right so this is i minus 1 i minus 1 1 it is brought here it is i minus 1 x plus y minus 1 this will be the denominator right so that is how you have got the answer and the right answer good you are very speed enough right okay now a complex of iron iron and the cyanide ion is like this is 100 percent ionized at one molar solution if its elevation in boiling point is 2.08 degree celsius the oxidation state of fe in the above complex is oxidation state of fe is being asked k is given as x tricky question very tricky question So it is given as Kx in bracket Fe Cn6, right? 100% ionized means it gives X number of K plus ion. Option D. Fe Cn6, okay, X minus. This becomes X minus there, okay? This is the X number of Kf. Okay. Now, its elevation of boiling point is being given 2.8. The oxidation state is being asked. How will you do it? Okay. It is 100% ionized. 100% ionized. Okay. So, therefore, I value is 1. I value is 1 only. Option C, sir. Okay. Sorry. I value is not 1. It is uh, X plus 1. X plus 1 you have to take. I value. I value. Sir, sir option C. X plus 1. I value is X plus 1. Right? If it is 100% ionized. Then. Taking that x plus 1, you have to make use of this. It is delta Tb is equal to I Kb into molality. Kb value is being given, right? And uh, delta Tb value is being given 2.08, 2.08. I value is x plus 1. Kb value is 0 0.52. Okay right and uh, molality so this is 1m solution that is 1 so in this in this equation you have to take the you have to get the value of x so anybody have not done it okay so this is 3 so i think you have told about the value 3 only right only thing is that equation you have to you have to do this calculation right 2.08 divided by 0 0.52 whatever the fraction you are going to get the value subtract it for, subtract one from it so you are going to get the answer to that have you i hope you have got it 2.08 divided by 0 0.5 0 0.52 0 0.52 almost forza forza 4 minus 1 okay 4 minus 1 okay you can uh, do it easily only not very difficult 2.08 divided by 52 is 4. 4 is equal to x plus 1. Therefore, x is, therefore, x is equal to 4 minus 1, that is 3. Okay. Hope you have understood. Molar depression constant. Molar depression of freezing point of water is 1.86 degree Celsius per 1000 grams of water. 0 0.02 moles of urea dissolved in 100 gram of water will produce a lowering of temperature of So this is the this is what the calculation only the calculation Sir, option B. Option B. 
Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I just explain it. Molar depression freezing point. Molar depression freezing point of water is one point eight delta T F. Uh, K value is being given. K value for water for thousand gram only. Point zero two mole of the urea dissolved in hundred gram. Okay, delta T F is equal to K F. Thousand K F. K F into W two by M two. Option B. W one. This is the one you have to take. This value is being given. Delta T F value that is okay. Molar. What is that? Uh, mole of urea dissolved in water will produce lowering of depression. Remember. Okay. This is what you have to find out. Thousand K F is being given. One point eight six. W two is being given. Okay. W two is point zero two moles of urea. You have to. This is value is being given. W two by M two. This value is being given. W one is hundred gram. Hundred. This is hundred. This is hundred. Given mass by molar mass is number of moles. Point zero two moles is being given, right? So with this calculation, you will get the answer. Point three seventy two. You are right. You have speed enough to do the calculation, and the right answer you have told, right? Okay. So these were there from the desk. Okay. So many numericals are to be solved, and this online platform may not be very good for solving the. Word questions, right? So the more uh, lengthier calculations will be there. Try at home, try at home, and uh, these are the important questions. Okay, so these are the level two questions when you have taken up. So you have to go for at least level two, level three, level four, then you are prepared for the CBSC examinations, right? Okay, thank you for your active participation, and uh, we will. take up the next chapter chemi uh, electrochemistry in the morning tomorrow thank you thank you sir thank you good night sir good night right bye sir bye 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Can we be just for? Okay, fine.